Greetings ladies and gentlemen, today I present to you the 2023 Easy Spawn. At Tuxi Industries, we strived to make the most efficient and effective self-powered oxygen module possible. This is the fully loaded version with a kitchen and freezer included. This has to be one of my favorite things to build because it's once it's built, food preservation and oxygen production is covered for up to eight duplicates. It's easy to set up and completely dupe accessible for easy construction, maintenance, and expansion. Up top, we have a hydrostyle electrolyzer which takes care of filtering and also acts as an infinite hydrogen storage. Only one pump is necessary for the hydrogen. We let the oxygen disperse from here, making this very power efficient. Down low, we have a deluxe barbecue kitchen complete with a freezer, two sterile fridges, and where critters can evolve into meat. Colonize your planetoids with the Tuxi Industries Easy Spawn today. All right, so let's get into the setup of this thing. Um, basically, you just want to build this out. You can see we're missing the battery. I'm missing a tile here and a tile here. But other than that, this is completely built out. You will need an external power source to power the pump because you're going to want to set this to zero and above zero. So this will vacuum out once we get the liquid lock in there that's the joy of this system is that this this hydra system actually also doubles as a liquid lock so that your dupes can get in and out what i've just got abe to do is i just got him to dump in 200 kilos whenever they grab one bottle and put it into one bottle emptier it's always going to be 200 kilos unless you got some laying around that's less than 200 kilos in a bottle but this is auto bottle, so he just pulled it, pulled 200 kilos out of this pool and put it in here. Now I'm going to switch this from brine to water. You can use any types of liquids that you want. You could use polluted water, and water would probably be your most common one. But I mean, you could use ethanol. You could use whatever's handy, as long as you have two liquids for this. Because if you use one liquid, it will flood. It would be too much liquid for this for these buildings to not become flooded and then it just won't work. So you have to use two different liquids. And uh, so now that this is done, um, we can go ahead and get rid of this bottle empty. I'm just waiting for it to empty out. This is what normal speed is like, it's painful. And then you put a tile there and now this side is completely isolated. Um, you're going to need another power source. I'm just using a dev generator for uh, demonstration purposes. And then you vacuum out this chamber. Now, you will need a source of hydrogen because this has to be primed for it to work. Um, so find yourself a caustic biome or you can do a little quick uh, setup outside with an electrolyzer just to get a little bit of hydrogen and then fill this area with hydrogen. Um, this part for setting up the freezer, um, we'll get to that in a bit. All right, now that we got our liquid lock in place, we can prime this up. Uh, it doesn't matter how you get the hydrogen in here or not. Um, just, you only need a little bit. It just has to be just hydrogen in this room. It can be grams, it doesn't matter. I've got some in this pipe segment that I'm about to, that I just deconstructed. And you can see here that we have just hydrogen here and oxygen here. You gotta make sure this is area is clear as well. This is why it's built this way uh, with the with with the this area closed in so that no carbon dioxide can come in. And uh, it, this is just gonna be hydrogen or er, oxygen. And this is also a great place to stick a pump if you need it uh, to feed some Atmo suits or, or a telescope or something like that. So this is built like this so that, and also so that there's room for the oxygen to come up here and interact with the radiant pipes and be cooled down because you're dealing with an electrolyzer, you're always gonna have 70 degree oxygen coming out of this thing no matter what temperature water you feed it. So usually your water is cooler and then you can have your water cool off the oxygen in here. This atmosensor are always set to 222,222 grams is usually my default number. You don't want to set it. You don't want to set it low because there's no pumps here. So everything needs to diffuse out of here. So you kind of need to create 
the high pressure zone here and then it'll push your oxygen out and uh, and that's what makes this nice and power free but you don't want to set it so high that they get popped eardrums which happens at about 4 kgs so I always like to usually set these to this number or 2500 and then uh, once you have this set up how come the electrolyzer's not going um, Oh, cuz cuz it's got no power perfect perfect let me get back with you so I just hooked up a little bit of power here and we've got automation we've got water and uh, where's our power all right turn this on give us a little bit of external power to get this going and what you want is you want to make sure that make sure you have your vent and whatnot uh, uh, deconstructed before this point so that you're not pumping the hydrogen out and then connect it up like this. And what you want is you want to have, you want to get enough hydrogen in here so that, I'm just going to turn this up so that we create a bunch of hydrogen in here, is you want to make sure that you have at least a kilo, maybe a little bit more hydrogen pressure in here. And uh, that's necessary because you want to have enough hydrogen in this chamber so that when you close it off there's a there's enough thermal mass in here because this is where your frozen food's gonna go and there's only one tile of hydrogen in here and make sure that you've got an aluminum aluminum ore and if you don't have aluminum ore use steel here you could probably get away with using a cheaper uh, radiant pipe but you'd have to set it much lower than the minus 20 degrees Th set this to minus 20 degrees if it's above minus 20 inside the pipe, it will continue cooling the hydrogen that we're going to put into this pipe. That's why this is also really nice for setup because we already have hydrogen right here with a pump right here. We can use this pump and just put on a bridge and fill that loop real easy. I have the automation disconnected from, the, from this so that you don't want this to fire up when you're filling the line, then it'll overfill it. You wanna fill this while this is all disabled and then once you have it full, you can just connect these. No duplicate labor required. This is where the smart battery is going to go. And again, I've got it. I've got it disconnected just because I don't want this to fire up until I'm ready to go. All right. So you can see here. I'm going to turn this back down to what it was, and we can see that we have a bunch of hydrogen in here. Now you can build a tile in here, and this seals this off. And you can see that we've got 1700 grams of hydrogen in there you know whatever you end up with and then you can put in your under power you can put in your where's the smart battery right there and disconnect our power here because that's why it just went to completely full power because <laughs> this thing's amazing and this is set to above 100 and now it's sending i always like to set this to 60 over 95. slow that down a little bit and now because we have this all in place we can put a bridge right there and that will allow us to fill up this loop once we've got a nice full pipe of hydrogen in here um we are out of hydrogen here it looks like i'm going to set this to 500 just like usually I leave it at a thousand, but I just want to get this full for us. And once you have this nice and full, you can deconstruct the bridge. Obviously, you could have a dupe doing this, but I'm just doing this with Dev Control Out Four or Control F Four to uh, make this quick. So now, now that we've got that gone, we can connect this. And that will chill this into a nice, you can see the temperature dropping nice and low there. And that'll make this into a nice minus 20 degree spot for us to store our food. The way that's going to work is we have this conveyor loader, which can only be reached by this auto sweeper. And this auto sweeper can't reach up in here. So this auto sweeper's main job is to just grab food that's freshly cooked from the grill, put it in here, and then it gets shipped up in here and put in storage. And the other auto sweeper's job 
is to be able to reach in there to grab the food so that your dupes can get the food and also so that if you have uncooked food in there it can load the grill with that stuff like if you've got a conveyor loader somewhere else where you have your dupes uh, load it with wild meat that they find out in the wild and then it throws it in here this will be able to grab that meat and put it in the grill this one can also reach this conveyor loader which is not connected to anything but this is the one that goes for organic um you want your polluted dirt and uh, i don't have it listed here uh, but you also want rot pile you want polluted dirt and rot pile selected on this one and possibly even your eggshells too because here you'll be getting eggshells this is your evolution chamber you're going to want some water in there i usually use two liquids but you can just use one it has to be at least 95 percent of a full tile down here if you just use one liquid but you can use literal grams if you use two liquids and uh, what happens is you send your eggs your excess eggs from your ranches here and then they hatch down here and um let's just spawn a hatch in there and you can see what happens and uh you know it starts to evolve and eventually it turns into meat and then it gets sent up sent to the grill or you know set this to forever have a griller and uh and what happens and down here this is usually a carbon filled pit but currently it's with oxygen the reason the reason for this is you want to have a sterile you'll need because your dupes can't access this area you have no way to your dupes have no way to eat so i usually have Unless you're unless you have are on max hunger difficulty or you're eating meal lice, you can set this to one kilo. Otherwise, if you're on max hunger, set it to two kilos. Same if you're using meal lice, you'll need to set it to two kilos just because of uh, you know your dupes will need more to feed them to feed them completely to full. The reason for two fridges is it's just convenient. This one is going to be your primary fridge where your dupes will always come to go and grab their food and, and eat it normally just living in the base. This fridge is for loading up a rocket. Like if you need to pull some food out of your infinite storage, you need to have an intermediate fridge to be able to put it into so then your dupes can come and grab that food and put it into your the fridge of your rocket. So that's why this one's here. It's a nice convenient way to do that. And it's built in. Um, what am I forgetting? Um, the settings, this one's above two, above 1000. This one's below 2000. And this is 60 and 95. This is set to rot pile and polluted dirt just to be able to, there's always gonna be a little bit of, uh, of with this system, there's always gonna be a little bit of food that rots out of this fridge. It's just always happens and uh and over here this is set to barbecue or whatever whatever cooked foods come out of the grill um neither one of these are set to manual use and i just set them to one this one this fridge is set to a two priority so that this auto sweeper will load the fridge before it loads before this gets loaded so that's that's why this one has a little bit high higher priority than that one this one's five because this one duplicates will be interacting with so if you have this whatever you have this one set to you could pro you could set this one to one as well and whatever your fridge in your rocket just has to be set to a higher priority than this and and then once once you have it loaded you'll want to turn it to sweep only that way you're that way your dupe will come and unload it and then the auto sweeper won't load it again because it's set to sweep only. I just want to show you some options with the Easy Spawn. Here is the Easy Spawn R. Um, I call it the Easy Spawn R because the ladder is on the right. I usually like to build them like this because your ladder is the highest traffic area and that's where your dupes need to breathe. So I like to put them on... 
I like to put the ladder on this side of the Easy Spawn. So this is the Easy Spawn R. The one I demonstrated earlier is the Easy Spawn L. These are blueprints linked down in the description. This is the basic Easy Spawn. You can see that I doesn't have the kitchen and the freezer, but this is a nice option if you're building a second electrolyzer and you need to oxygenate another part of your base that's getting a little bit you know, low breathability for your dupe. So this is a great option for that. And if you already have built a kitchen and a freezer or whatever, this is the easy spawn for you. Nice, tight, compact, still does the job. Um, down here, we have the ranch easy spawn. This is one of the most beautiful uses of space. I, I, I actually love this design because if you look here, we have a perfect 96 tile ranch. You can fit eight critters in here and another beautiful use of this design is here i've got a hatch but you could use long-haired slicksters right next to your oxygen source you could have six dupes and probably a full ranch of eight long-haired slicksters to feed to help feed those dupes and this electrolyzer would still be able to keep up with that just a great use of space uh, you definitely need this door in here in this design because if the eggs down here could easily overcrowd this ranch. That's why I've got this door in all of my designs, but in this one, it's actually really needed. Over here, we have the mess hall design. And I really, I like this one as well, but you can see here the grill and the auto sweepers don't count against the great hall. And here we can have a great hall. And I've got because this can support eight dupes, obviously I've got eight chairs. The conveyor loader does count as heavy machinery, so it can't be in the room. So I've got an auto sweeper here that can breach all of the, so all the food that the dupes drop will be picked up by the auto sweeper, put in this conveyor loader and sent back to storage. A nice way to do it. We got our phone here. And uh, another couple options on this one is you can see, um, this is a retake, so I actually had it built like this. If you need to expand and put in another, any other building that you want to put in here, but usually it's another hydrogen generator, you can build this from the outside so you don't end up mixing gases or anything like that. And then you can, you can uh, deconstruct this from the inside and build your hydrogen generator that way. Just a, just a little trick for you. Um, this is also a great place for a wheeze wart if you have some spare phosphorite and a wheeze wart and you want your oxygen to be a little bit more cooler or your feed is a bit too hot. Like this works best if you've got a cool slush geyser or something like that. And then you run it, you tepidize it a bit so that when it goes through the desalinator or the, uh, the uh, water sieve, uh, it doesn't freeze on the way out and uh, use that to heat up the water. And then you, you can heat the water to like 10 degrees and it'll usually come out at a nice 20 degree room temperature, which is ideal for almost everything. And, uh, but if you're running, if you have a normal water vent that comes out at 30 degrees, this might be an option for you. I only recommend using one because if you use more than one, it could be a lot of radiation in a high traffic area. You might not want to do that. And uh, down here, we also have a demonstration for an easy polluted dirt or rot pile uh, disposal. Um, here, you can see we don't have rot pile yet, but that's why I've selected all organic so that when rot pile comes, when something rots in that fridge, um, it'll be discovered and it'll still be selected here. And this auto sweeper can reach it. It'll pick up the rot pile and stick it in here and then it'll dump it right here in front of a deodorizer and as long as you got some sand in that deodorizer it'll be able to eat whatever polluted oxygen comes off of the polluted dirt um this is just a simple on the spot solution but you could transport it to you could use that polluted dirt somewhere else where you've got maybe less oxygen pressure in your base so it actually does off gas i haven't used a compost in years so this is my preferred way of doing it you know, or you could just store the polluted dirt, but you know, I like to do it this way because we always need more clay. If you do decide to go better than barbecue, here's an option for you to uh, build a gas range in here and uh, this can feed it and this can take away the cooked food, no problem. Um, there's lots of options here. If you're planning on going with gourmet food, 
I recommend that you actually, you might want to plan for it a bit earlier and put your auto sweepers somewhere else more central, like you could easily put an auto sweeper here, right? And then you could build your grill on one side and your other stuff on the other side. Like you've got lots of room because of the range of the auto sweeper. So uh, I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of options for the Easy Spawn, and i like to thank you for considering it for purchase, and uh, have a nice cycle. Here's a quick montage of uh, eight different builds that I used on some survival colonies I played in the, the last year, and as you can see, you know, obviously this is a, these are all a little bit older designs, but here's uh, some working examples in survival. Here are the schematics. The save and blueprints are linked below. Thanks again for your patronage to Tuxie Industries and please be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our products. We hope you get many cycles of faithful service from your 2023 Easy Spawn. Complaints and refund requests can be mailed to 50,000 Shattered Planet Way. Thanks for watching and I hope you were informed, entertained, or both. Catch you next time!